This is a brief video on estimating the population mean by Dr. Archie Earle. First of all, x bar is equal to the sample mean and mu is equal to the population mean. So that's what we have here. X bar is the sample mean, uh, mu is the population mean. Uh, these are the steps involved in estimating the population mean. All right, step number one, we find the margin of error. Step number two, we add and subtract the margin of error to and from the sample mean. And that gives us our, our confidence interval. So the confidence interval is what we're looking for. Uh, that gives us an estimate of the population mean. And we estimate the population mean by using the sample mean. So once we get the amount of error, we uh, subtract the amount of error from the uh, sample mean, and we add the amount of error to the sample mean. And that gives us our confidence interval. That gives us the two numbers uh, between which uh, the population mean is located. All right, so uh, there are two situations that we have to concern about. Uh, situation number one, the population uh, standard deviation is not known. If the population standard deviation is not known, then you have to use a t-distribution in order to do your estimate. So as indicated here, uh, uh, the t-distribution depends on the size of the sample. So there's a different t-distribution uh, for each uh, sample size. And for the measure of the sample size, we use what we call the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom, in this case, is equal to n minus 1. And df is short for degrees of freedom. So as you can see here, we use the sample size to get the degrees of freedom. So this shows that uh, the t-distribution depends upon the sample size. Uh, then uh, the formula for the error the error, a margin of error or the error, we have E, which stands for the margin of error or the error, is equal to uh, T sub alpha over 2 times S divided by the square root of N. That's the formula that we use to get the error. Once we get the error, we add it to uh, the sample mean and we subtract it from the sample mean and that gives us our confidence interval. As indicated here, uh, we subtract it from the sample mean, uh, then we add it to the sample mean. So our population mean would be between those two numbers, between x bar minus uh, e and uh, x bar plus e. And we can also express this as x bar plus or minus e, and we can also express it as uh, an interval notation, as we learned in some of our previous math courses. Uh, we can express it as uh, x bar minus e, comma, uh, x bar plus e, uh, close uh, parenthesis. So that's a way of expressing the uh, confidence interval. So, of course, in this course, you have to be able to express it in all three ways. Uh, so uh, this is an example of a t-distribution. Uh, the T distribution, if you look at it, it looks just like the uh, Z distribution. It's a nice, smooth, bell-shaped curve. The mean is zero, and the standard deviation is one, just like for the Z distribution. But the difference is this. Uh, we have a different T distribution for a different size sample. So there's a separate T distribution for each sample of a specific size. But for the Z distribution, uh, we don't worry about the uh, sample size. The Z distribution would be the same regardless of the sample size. So uh, in one of the textbooks, uh, the uh, 
T distribution table is table A-3. The Z distribution table is table uh, A-2. So when you do a uh, T distribution, you have to use uh, the T distribution table in order to solve your problem. So this is what you would have uh, if the uh, standard deviation of the population uh, is not known. Now, if the standard deviation of the population is known, then you have a Z distribution instead of a T distribution. So uh, this is how your uh, formula will look if the standard deviation of the population is known. Uh, you would have E, the amount of error or the margin of error, is equal to Z sub alpha over 2 times sigma instead of S. S represents the standard deviation of the sample, but sigma represents the standard deviation of the population. So we have sigma divi divided by the square root of N. And remember, in this case, you use the Z distribution table in order to do your calculation. All right, so uh, we did an example here. Uh, we wanted to find the 95% confidence interval uh, for a situation. All right, the sample size uh, was uh, 49. Uh, so we had uh, n equals 49, and the uh, the uh, standard deviation of a sample was 21. The standard deviation of a sample was 21, and the mean of the sample was uh, 0.4. So we wanted to find the 95% confidence interval. Uh, based on those measures. So we got the degrees of freedom here, uh, n minus 1, that would be uh, 48. Uh, so once we got the degrees of freedom, we can figure out uh, t sub alpha over 2. To figure that out, uh, we go to the t distribution table, we look for the degrees of freedom, 48. Uh, if, it's not, if the degrees of freedom is not in the table, we get the one that is closest to. So 48 wasn't in there, but 50 was in there. You see, so we used the 50 instead of the 48. And after you do your degrees of freedom, you have to look across the top for the area in one tail. The area in one tail. Now, if you're doing a 95% confidence interval, that means that there's 5% in both of these tails together. So if you divide that by 2, 5%, uh, which as a decimal is 0 0.05 divided by 2, would be 0 0.025. So that's how much would, would be in one tail. You would have 0 0.025 in this tail and 0 0.025 in that tail. So that's what you're looking for in this table when you look across the top. The area in one tail, which is 0 0.025. Then you come down to where this line intersects this line. You come down to where they intersect, and there you would see your T sub alpha over 2, which in this case is 2.009. So that's the T sub alpha over 2. So you go back to your formula, and you substitute that into your formula. So you would have uh, 2.009 times 21, which is S, the standard deviation, of the uh, sample over the square root of 49, which is n. So you do this calculation, put it into your calculator, and you find out that the error or the margin of error is uh, 6.027. Now that we have the error, uh, we, we can substitute it into this formula to get the 95% confidence interval. As indicated here, uh, on the left, you subtract the error from the sample mean. And on the right, you add the error to the sample mean. And that's what we have done here in the next step. Uh, the sample mean was 0.4, and the error was uh, 6.027. So on the left, we have 0.4, which is the sample mean, minus 6.027. And on the right, we have... Uh, 0.4 plus 
uh, 6.027 and of course we're estimating that the population mean is between these two values and then of course uh, we uh, do the operation and as you can see here on the left we get negative 5.627 and on the right we get 6.427 so this is the 95 percent uh, confidence interval uh, for the mean based on the information that we have and this means that we are 95 percent confident that the mean is between these two numbers that the mean is between negative 5.627 and positive uh, 6.427 and uh, we can express the mean in two other uh, excuse me we can express the um, estimate of the mean or the confidence interval in two other ways we can express the confidence interval as 0.4 plus or minus 6.027 that's another way of saying the same thing that we said here. Also, we can use interval notation that you learned in your math classes. Uh, we can express uh, the confidence interval as parenthesis negative 5.627 comma uh, 6.427 uh, parenthesis. So all of these uh, different ways of expressing uh, the confidence interval uh, mean the same thing. They all mean that uh, we're estimating that the mean is between negative uh, 5.627 and a positive uh, 6.427. Of course, uh, you have to know how to express uh, the confidence interval in all three of these ways. This concludes our lecture on finding the confidence interval if the standard deviation is unknown. Have a great day.